In today's video, all about callouts and annotations within Camtasia 2021. So let's jump into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now, if you've spent any amount of time on YouTube or Twitter, you will have seen many instructional videos with annotations. You will have seen GIFs on Twitter where there are different callouts jumping around the screen. Well, today I'm going to show you how you can make those within Camtasia. So the first thing you'll have to do is open up Camtasia and record the footage you'd like to use. Now, I've already made a video on screen recording, so you can always watch that by going to that link in the description, but I've already prepared a recording right here. And as you can see, when I press on play, I can preview that screen recording. Now, I want to add some annotations and callouts to highlight different areas of my screen. So let's go ahead and navigate to the side where we can have annotations and select that. Here at the top, you will notice that we have these callouts. We have arrows and lines, shapes, different special effects such as blur and pixelate, as well as sketch motion callouts and keystroke callouts. And let's have a look at the first one here with the original callouts. This is where we can add different callouts to our recorded footage. Now, the one I'm going to highlight is which areas of the screen to press or click. So here in this part of the footage, I'm going to click on the Google Drive icon. And so I want to highlight that. So I'm going to take this call out right here and drag it into my timeline. You can see it appears right there at the top. I can manually adjust it and I can also move this arrow around. So let's just put it over there. Let's point this to the icon and let's type in click on drive. There we go. Now, as with any element within Camtasia, when you click on an element, you then get an additional menu on the right. And this is where you can change the font, font color. You can change the style so you can select bold if you choose so and the size. You can also change the properties of the actual annotation, not just the text. So here on the right, when I click on this, I can change the color that is used. So let's just make it a yellow color. And then I can scroll down and I can choose if I want an outline or not. Now here you can see I can give it an outline and also a color for that outline. Or I can just leave it as it is and select no outline. So I'm going to just leave it at zero because I don't want an outline. So the first part is click on drive. As you can see, I can preview this. Once I've clicked on it, I no longer need that annotation. So what I'm going to do now is in my timeline, I'm going to resize this. So here on the right, I'm going to click this and drag it to the left. This annotation or callout has now been resized. So when you preview this, you will see it appears, highlights, and then disappears. I want it to disappear a bit sooner than that. There we go. So here, as you can see, it appears and then disappears when I click it. Now, what I can do is I can also add animations to this. So let's add an animation or a transition to this callout. I want it to fade in. Now I've already added this to my favorites. So let's go ahead and drag that fade on top of there and then adjust the length of the fade. So we're going to just adjust that like so. Now when I preview this, you'll see the call out appear, highlights an area, and then it disappears. Okay, here we have to verify our password. So let's make a note of that and let's use a different type of call out for this. We're going to go back to annotations select those callouts and select the arrow. So here we're going to add an arrow to our work. Let's go ahead and drag this arrow into our timeline, adjust where it's pointing. So we're going to point to next there, just like so. And then on my timeline again, check where I want to stop showing this arrow. This will be where I want it to stop showing and minimize this. Under transitions, let's give this a fade as well. Adjust the length of the fade. And now what you will see is you will see that that call out or that arrow appears, points to the correct area and then fades out. Here I need some additional information and because this is a password, let's pretend that we want to blur or pixelate this area. Well, we can do that using that same call out menu. So here, when we go to annotations, the fourth option there is special and the special options are to highlight or spotlight an area. We also have the blur and pixelate. So let's go ahead and pixelate the entire area 
going to drag it onto our timeline. And here you can see that I can pixelate this entire sign-in box. Now, the pixelation intensity can be adjusted on the right-hand side. So here, when I drag this to the left, you will see more of those pixels appear. Or when I bring it to the right, then the pixels get larger. I'm going to find a balance between the two so that people can still see that I'm blurring something, but they can't read the content. We're going to pretend that we only want to blur it for a split second. So we're going to find that place where we want to stop blurring it. And there we go. We're going to have to keep going. And then here we can have our regular picture again. So we're going to lengthen the duration of this pixelation. There we go. Let's preview this. We press play. It's pixelated. As you can see, the footage keeps running, but the pixelation is present and then it goes back to normal. Now, if you were to use blurring instead of pixelation, it's the same principle. So we can remove this and we can use blur instead. So here you will see that I can choose to blur this area. Again, I can select which area to blur and then I can choose my intensity here. So you can see we have less blur or more blur. We can preview it, see where we want it to stop and then simply lengthen the duration of that call out. Now this way you can really tweak that footage that you're sharing with people and you can create GIFs that have those different animated effects jumping in and out of the screen, highlighting different areas. Now we're going to use these spotlights. Now we want to draw attention to the confirm button in this part of the video. So we're going to drag a spotlight on top of our screen. So let's go ahead and select the call out titled spotlight drag it onto our timeline and now we can choose which area of the screen we want to spotlight so i'm going to spotlight the confirm button let's adjust this and then we can also obviously change the spotlight intensity here so we're going to make it quite intense and as always we're going to add a fade there we go this will now fade in highlight that area and then we can choose to fade out as soon as it's finished. We're back to normal. And then the last one that I use all the time in my videos and in the GIFs that I share on Twitter, that's the annotation. And that is where you have an effect as if you're drawing onto the screen. So let's go back to our annotations and select the annotation. Now the annotation sketch motion allows us to draw onto our footage. So I'm going to use the first one, which is a circle we're going to just drag it onto our timeline. Now I'm going to highlight, say, this document right here at the top. That's the document that I will open. So I want to draw a little line around that. I can change the properties here. So let's use the blue color, make it a bit thicker. And let's also lengthen that draw time. That's how long it takes me to draw the full circle. Now you will see that the effect looks like this. It draws a line around it and then the footage continues. Now, obviously I don't want to keep this drawn there as soon as I start moving my page. So I'm going to again shorten the duration. I can use one of my favorite transitions, the fade, and I'll fade it out. There we go. Let's have a look at the preview. It will draw around the file and then fade away and the footage continues. All good and well, I now want to export this as a GIF, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to export, we're going to export it as a local file. Now I've already set everything up for GIFs, so let's just select custom production, next, select GIF or GIF file, which is an animated image file, next, frame rate of 20 is perfect, next, let's leave everything as it is and simply export the demo file. I'm going to export that. You can see it's being exported right now. And as soon as this render is finished, we will have our GIF or GIF file with those callouts, with those annotations. Here we have our production folder. We can open that. And right there we have our demo. So let's open it. You can see the animation starts. All those callouts appear when they should be appearing. There's an arrow there. We have the blur effect. Once that password has been put in, we're going to have a spotlight effect. So now we're going to have the spotlight. There we go. And then finally, we are also going to draw a circle around that file and finished. This is a GIF or GIF, so it will loop and you can easily share this on social media. 
Now, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, make sure to subscribe. Now, if you're interested in finding out more about Camtasia 2021, there are links in the description below. And there's also a link to a discounted version. You will see there's a discount code there that will give you 10% off if you choose to purchase Camtasia. Now, if you're already a Camtasia user, make sure to check out my playlist on tips and tricks for Camtasia 2021. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.